Metaverse. What is it about? When was it created? Why is Mark Zuckerberg putting so much focus on it? Is it all about virtual reality and an easy way to make money? The Tech History Channel plans to explain everything about metaverses for you. And this is not just another video telling you how to earn money with metaverses. We wish to supply you with great knowledge about the metaverse, starting back in 1992 up to 2022, and what happened over those 30 years. No, the metaverse wasn't created with Second Life. Second Life is a metaverse created by Linden Lab and was the first popular metaverse, but the concept was created long before, more precisely in 1992. We'll talk about Second Life later in this video, okay? So, like I said, 1992, when songs like Under the Bridge by Red Hot Chili Peppers, Snap's Rhythm in a Dancer were filling the airwaves. 1992 was really a too sexy year for Right Said Fred. In this same year, Neil Stevenson, an American sci-fi writer, created a book called Snow Cash, and this is where the term metaverse was introduced. It was an urban space where people could have access through augmented reality glasses in public terminals, and those spaces used to be very similar to our world. Wow, augmented reality glasses? Metaverses! I feel like I'm in the future or in a sci-fi movie. But it's present and it's real. So exciting. It's not rare to see things in old movies that become reality, considering sci-fi continues to become reality. Maybe someday your cell phone will be implanted in the third hemisphere of your brain. <laughs> Don't forget to say hello to Alexa. Talking about reality and present, that book, Snow Cash, inspired Philip Rosedale, an American entrepreneur and technologist, to create Second Life, the metaverse that I mentioned before. This happened in 2003, the same year the White Stripes recorded Seven Nation Army. The idea behind Second Life was very simple. Just like the name suggests, it was supposed to be about you living a different life, literally, your second life. So inside this metaverse, you could be represented by an avatar. You could buy land, build a house, meet other people behind other avatars, go to parties, be a virtual DJ, or choose another job such as dancer, promoter, sales, and many, many other possibilities. Everything inside a 3D environment. But what about the augmented reality glasses? Probably not, right? Probably VR headsets instead, right? No, not really. Not any kind of glasses just a PC with a monitor to see everything and interact, especially since we are talking about 2003, when such devices were really expensive. Also, Second Life used to have its own economy and its own currency called Linden Dollars. People could make money inside of the metaverse and convert it to real money. In fact, many people got rich and still earn a lot of money through Second Life by creating 3D content or working there, supplying many kinds of services. Yes, I said still earn, because Second Life still exists. In fact, it's very, very alive. There are over 70 million registered accounts. We don't know how many accounts are active, but each month, Second Life attracts about 300,000 users and an average of 40,000 concurrent users. Not bad for a platform that's been around for more than 20 years. The point is, that community is very loyal. Not uncommon to see profiles that are 15 years old. But the big boom, I mean the Second Life bubble, occurred in 2006 and lasted till 2007. In that time, all the big brands were interested in being advertised in Second Life, and many people started saying that the future will be websites where people could experience and interact in 3D. Well, as you probably noticed, this never happened. Yet. Why? Well, let's say it's not a practical thing and really requires a strong effort before users could really get engaged. It takes a lot of hardware to run Second Life to make it an acceptable, good experience with various levels of complexity. In parallel, at the same time, the world was starting to become mobile, and Second Life starts to make it clear that it was a good platform for entertainment and enthusiasts. But then, the bubble burst. But as I said, it's still alive with a certain stability and still a very strong presence in terms of the metaverse. Second Life deserves its own video. And of course, we have plans to produce it soon because Second Life is so interesting and full of details and is still exciting today. Hey, 
Enjoying this video? Do you wish to see a full video about Second Life? If you are interested, please subscribe to our channel and give us your like, because this will only happen if we receive your support. No, we will not talk about a third life, but let's talk a bit about, about metaverses that popped up after Second Life. I could mention Habo and a few others that popped up during the Second Life hype, but let's talk about the follow generations of metaverses, the metaverses based on VR headsets. Just as VR headsets started to become more affordable, a few other metaverses started to show up, like VR Chat in 2014 and Altspace in 2015. VR Chat is listed as the biggest metaverse from many different sources in terms of concurrent users. Altspace is not on the same level as VR Chat, but it's still considered relevant because Microsoft bought Altspace in 2015. Altspace announced they were shutting down, but at the last minute, Microsoft knocked on the door. Since then, the best of both platforms was the same, arrival of metaverses and at this time using VR headsets with an expectation of nearby future headsets becoming standalone. In other words, low polygon environments. So since VRChat and Altspace are using VR headsets, it means we're talking about a second life with headsets, right? Well, no, not really. Second Life still had a lot more possibility than those two. For starters, none of them had its own currency and both platforms had focus on hangouts and events. The future of Altspace is very uncertain. We are still waiting for Microsoft to put focus on it. However, VRChat looks like it's in very good shape. So Second Life can be considered a metaverse, but there is no VR or AR involved, right? VR chat can be considered a metaverse, but there is no economy. What about Minecraft, Roblox, Fortnite? That's pretty easy. They are games. Hmm. Well, yes, they are games indeed. But since all of them can handle some common metaverse properties, they can also be considered metaverses. In Minecraft, you can create things. No need for AR or VR headsets. You can interact with people and you can create and sell content with NFTs. We will talk later about NFTs in this same video. Anyway, despite all those capabilities, yes, it is a game. A game where people can create the objects and rules, so you can win or you can lose, just like any other game. Roblox is also a game. Not playable like Minecraft, however Roblox has its own currency, the Robux. Both games are low poly as well, with zero resemblance to reality. They look more like Lego. Oh. And I almost forgot about Fortnite. How could I? Well, Fortnite in essence is a battle game where you can create your own games, just like Minecraft, and the most popular mode is the Battle Royale. So as you can see, few games are also considered metaverses due to a few characteristics. Also, the metaverse doesn't have a full set of defined properties, just a few. Let's say that if a platform has people represented by avatars inside a virtual environment with the capability to interact with one another socially. Well, this is the minimum and common requirement of a metaverse. Have you heard about Travis Scott, the American rapper? He hosted a very epic event on Fortnite in 2020, and it was a very exciting event. And this proved that Fortnite can be a great place to host events. In 2020, Minecraft hosted a festival with more than 300 DJs called Electric Blockaloo, a rave that went on non-stop for three days. In February of 2022, David Guetta hosted a 45-minute event on Roblox on an intergalactic-themed set. It became a reality when Roblox partnered up with Warner Music Group and Wonderworks Studio. Linden Lab, the same company that created Second Life, also created another metaverse called Sansar, with many of the same features as Second Life. It had a great focus on virtual reality and the use of VR headsets. Sadly, they decided to sell this platform because they didn't know how to make a profit with it. The next buyers decided to set the focus of Sansar on virtual events. On some occasion, avatars could attend 3D rave events and see great DJs like Fatboy Slim or DJ Markey on a Chromaki screen. In 2021, Sansar hosted the Splendor XR, an Australian virtual festival where many artists perform. There was a special performance by the Killers. People paid around $25 to see the whole festival. As you can see, yes, concerts and festivals are a thing for metaverses. 
It's obvious that we will see many more exciting concerts and events in various metaverses, and I can hardly wait. After the hype of Second Life and the general low relevance of VR chat and alt space, many people considered the subject of metaverses to be over. But then, a big surprise. In June of 2021, Mark Zuckerberg announced a big initiative involving metaverses. Before that, long before that, in 2014, Facebook acquired Oculus, a very popular company that produces VR headsets. It's likely that Mark Zuckerberg started to imagine a combo between work, social media, and VR. What could be the obvious way to do that? Metaverses, of course. Since socializing and community are important pieces of the metaverse puzzle, the transition could be much easier. At first, it was just good ideas that had no priority. However, Facebook, a company that is a social media platform itself and owns a few other social media platforms, started to face image issues. At the same time, users were abandoning Facebook and the other products from Facebook, such as Instagram and WhatsApp. The need to reinvent had become urgent, and on the 28th of October of 2021, three weeks after a testimony in the U.S. Senate that revealed bad stories about Facebook, Mark decided to rebrand Facebook with a new name, Meta. Of course, long before this testimony, Facebook was facing a few other image issues, such as fake news scandals on Donald Trump's election and the Cambridge Analytica data scandal. Rebranding is a very useful marketing practice when the image of a company is damaged because it's much easier and cheaper to become a new brand rather than try to fix the damaged issue of an existing one. But Mark was facing not only an image issue, the health of his products and services was not doing so well either. So Meta was Mark Zuckerberg's attempt at completely changing the direction of his business, a bet on a new name and a new focus, Metaverse. With an initial investment of $150 million, Mark started a new product called Horizon, a metaverse where people can hang out, relax, enjoy experiences, create their own experiences, and play games. Also, in parallel, there is another metaverse called Horizon Workrooms, and in this one, teams can connect, collaborate, and develop ideas together. It's a business-driven metaverse. Mark expects to see people using the metaverse as a working environment. We don't know if Mark and Horizon will be successful, but we can't deny that Mark is responsible for the revival of the metaverses. And now, it's a hot topic. Let's stay tuned. As mentioned before, it's very common to conduct business in metaverses between users, and it's also very common for metaverses to have their own currency. Like I said, Second Life has the Linden dollar, Roblox has the Robux, Sansar has the Sansar dollar, and on and on. Those metaverses adopted such a culture before cryptocurrencies and NFTs became a thing. In other words, why create a proprietary currency instead of using something digital and decentralized? We are talking about using digital currencies for digital goods, which was the natural path for NFTs and cryptocurrency to become the primary method to do business in the metaverse. So now the new metaverses adopted this idea, which is something really good. However, there is a downside, speculation. Just like the metaverse, cryptocurrency is also a hot topic. Why not combine both? Actually, new metaverses are popping up all the time because many people want to surf the hype of the metaverses, crypto, and NFTs, and many of those metaverses only have the intention of making easy money. So if you have plans to dive into metaverses, you must be capable to identify such pitfalls. Choose legit metaverses, the ones that promise true entertainment, where things like NFTs and cryptocurrency are secondary, meaning they're a possibility instead of the primary focus. Of course, there is nothing wrong with trying to make some money with speculation. The important thing here is that you should understand your needs and the primary objective of the platform that you decide to choose. Facebook's horizon is certainly at the forefront of this new generation of metaverses, but let's talk about a few other ones now. As mentioned before, Speculation is a reality for many of the new generation of metaverses, so bear in mind that none of the following mentions are suggestions from this channel, and our mentions are purely based on popularity. So let's skip the Facebook meta and go directly to Decentraland. Decentraland uses a currency called MANA. Hey, you stated that this new generation of metaverses don't have their own currency because it does not make sense anymore. So what's the deal? 
Easy, easy. But good point. You almost caught me. Well, MANA is a cryptocurrency. And like any other cryptocurrency, it is decentralized. You can trade MANA with no need to be a player of Decentraland. You can, for example, install cryptocurrency trade apps and convert MANA to real money, or exchange it for other cryptocurrencies if you wish. So yes, MANA is a cryptocurrency, and many metaverses created their own currency. And the philosophy behind this is the use of blockchain. And Decentraland is not the only one with a focus on lands and a decentralized philosophy. There is another metaverse called Sandbox that is very similar. So do you believe that this new generation of metaverse is all about money, money, money? Let me introduce you to Rec Room, a very popular metaverse with a focus on recreation. That explains the name. Yes, you can create things and sell in Rec Room, but Rec Room doesn't have that overreacted need for NFTs or cryptocurrencies and will not ask you to register to play the game with your crypto wallet oath login. That's not the focus. In fact, Rec Room is very popular with kids, and there's also a separate version for kids under 13. Rec Room is a social hangout game where users meet up with friends to explore and create rooms. Each one contains a different experience. You can create laser tag games, dodgeball games, and a few others. The metaverse was a hype in the past, and now it's a hype again. Is the metaverse the new 3D television that's been promised time and time again to be the future? Only time will tell. Meanwhile, there is a lot of practical issues involving metaverses. For starters, one of the many questions, what can be considered a metaverse and what cannot? Another question is, are VR headsets something mandatory for a platform to be considered a metaverse? Some people say yes, others say no. So which is it? Let's say that the answer is yes. This will generate many other practical issues. For example, standalone headsets or tethered headsets. This decision impacts the experience a lot, since standalone headsets are not powerful enough to supply you a very realistic experience. And if a very realistic immersive experience becomes a requirement, this will generate another issue. Anyway, actually only tethered headsets can supply very realistic 3D environments, but it requires a beefy PC and cables. And this also leads to another issue. Since standalone headsets are the future, eventually they will be something that a user can just open a box and start using straight away. The enthusiasts of VR believe that this will happen sooner or later, but when? Assuming that all the consequences of mandatory use of VR headsets can be solved, this will also lead us to another question. Are VR headsets actually good for metaverses? You may say, of course they are. Check the numbers. According to Steam, as the date of this video, VR Chat had 30,000 recurrent connections. Nobody can deny how successful VR Chat is, but bear in mind that the concept of community is a very important point that can really ensure the longevity of a metaverse as a product. Second Life made this very clear for us. It doesn't really look like VR headsets and community make a good love story. The numbers of VR Chat are partially a consequence of the popularity of VR headsets, which continue to get more affordable. So yes, 30,000 users, but what is the lifespan of the users? I mean, for how long would those users be consuming VR Chat and with what frequency? Since the days of Minitel, BBS, news groups, IRCs, and other things from the past that favored the rise of digital communities, all the way up to the present day, frequency and persistence are two fundamental ingredients to sustaining a digital community. It means that you need to access it many times in a week, possibly more than once a day, to create a strong link with other users. It's probably what you do today when you are using WhatsApp on your mobile. You may notice that nothing has changed since the BBS. Communities have a very delicate balance, where one person is part of another person's experience, and that means, in theory, if a single person decides to leave, this can literally destroy an entire community all at once, like a castle of cards. And it's not uncommon to see digital community-based platforms collapse suddenly due to such principles. VR headsets don't have the practicality required by theoretical community principles. Even a standalone headset requires you to turn it on, wait for the boot, run the program, eventually calibrate something, and also to have batteries available. After all, you are practically disconnected from everything around you. In other words, it's a ritual and it's bureaucratic. Even a short break to the toilet will be an issue. 
as will answering the phone or grabbing a glass of water. And not to mention that you will get tired of using the headset relatively quickly and will hardly be able to stay in this deprived state for much longer. Now imagine doing this routinely for many years. Of course some people are capable, but most of them are not. So it's very likely that the whole success of VR chat happens through casual users where the turnover is high. I mean, they gain more new users than they lose. We believe that the metaverse is the future, but we still don't know if this future starts today or if we need to wait a little longer for a more viable means to enjoy the metaverse if a VR headset is necessary. And we also need to wait for this cryptocurrency wave to be over so we can understand if it's just the hype or if it's here to stay. Let's wait for the answers and hope that the metaverses are here to stay because they are really cool. And you, what do you think about metaverses? Do you have experience with metaverses? Tell us by leaving your comment to this video below. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and give us your like on this video. We are a brand new channel that really needs your help. Our channel can only exist with your help. This is Tech History Channel. See you in the next video.